This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so Jason and Jason were talking the other day uh, after this support group conversation, and we realized we could probably walk people through an easier and uh, more lightweight way to do a testing environment. Um, at Commit, I gave a talk in re, uh, regards to the use of K3S. Uh, K3S is, there you are, uh, apparently a website that thinks my browser is a phone, but it's a stripped down version of Kubernetes as a whole. The important part about this is basically you will get all of the primary components but they've pulled out all the things that make it really heavy. This is important because you need less RAM for the service, you need less RAM per node, and it takes up less disk space. This means that you have fewer requirements and you need less of a bulky machine to get it to work. Um, what we're gonna demonstrate is actually the use of a digital ocean droplet and the use of K3S. Uh, Jason, what is the size of the node that you're going to use? So the uh, DigitalOcean server has eight gigs of RAM and four CPUs, which would be what you would normally deploy like a full GitLab Omnibus on. Right, right. And actually a rather large one at that. Um, because K3S uses less resources, and let me give some context there. If you use Kubernetes or Rancher Kubernetes Engine or GKE or even Minikube, which believe it or not, is full-blown Kubernetes in the bottle. Yes. This 512 megs per server is doubled. And the 75 megs of RAM per node is quadrupled, which means if you have a given node on GKE that's four gigs of RAM, you lose close to a gig, believe it or not, just keeping Kubernetes running on the node. With K3S, you lose maybe 100, 128 meg. Notice the difference in scale. So you can run the server or the master, which is normally a hosted providers, they do that for you, you're only running the nodes. You can manage to run the master itself as well as the node stuff in less memory than it takes to run a single node on a full-blown Kubernetes. So, Jason, you want to go ahead and get started? Sure thing. Let me go ahead and um, share my screen. Cool. So um, to get started, um, I'm in just some background of what I've done. The DigitalOcean public IP, I've set a wildcard to a domain, callyour.me, to it so that once it's all done, we can easily see it in the browser and Cert Manager and stuff like that won't have any problems issuing certificates. Um, I've made a K3S folder just to kind of work out of. Uh, within this, I have some YAML files, but I'll kind of go over those as I'm using them. It's just some stuff that you kind of put in place while you're running all this. I've installed the uh, K3S soup file, which um, will allow me to quickly install a server and nodes and all that fun stuff. Uh, for some reason, the website says that's pronounced ketchup, but I can't figure out why. Um, but anyway, um, I've also got this nice little notepad here that has some notes for me to quickly do these things so you don't have to watch me typing out commands. But uh, to start out, we're going to use the K3 sub binary. We're going to tell it to install. I'm giving it the IP address of where to install to. And then I'm giving it some extra ar uh, arguments for, for the Kubernetes install, namely don't deploy service LB and don't deploy traffic which I think it's still going to deploy traffic for some reason, but that's something we're looking into. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. We're gonna get these fun commands. As long as I didn't typo anything, everything will work out just fine. So with that done, it's going to put a cube config file in my current directory. You can see it, it's now located there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the cube config variable just so I can easily access this stuff if I can type. And then I'm going to go ahead and echo that real quick, make sure I got that set right. And I should be able to cluster info and get information about the URL and all that fun stuff. 
So that shows that it is installed K3S onto the, onto the DigitalOcean server. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is set up local storage, copy this file. Uh, and we can see there what it's doing. It's creating a namespace, it's creating a service account, a cluster role, cluster role binding, all kinds of good stuff. Um, you can see the files located there. There's a good bit of information here and this all came from the website that tells you how to do this from K3S. So it's easily findable on the internet and all that fun stuff. Uh, next, we need to go ahead and do kubectl get sc because we're going to need to set that to the basic. It's going to be called local path, but it never hurts to verify. Once again, this is from the Kubernetes ah, it's from the uh, Kubernetes documentation itself on how to change your storage path. Basically, I'm just setting the storage path to the default class for the local path that we just created to true. Right. This is important that you have a default storage class because when dynamic provisioning comes into play, if there is no default, it will actually wait for you to tell it the storage class. Uh, so in order to make it as simple as Helm install GitLab, you need to pre-provision a default. So that's this is why we're setting that. Yep. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and create a uh, namespace named Metal LB System. This will be setting up the Metal LB load balance we're gonna be using. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and kubectl apply the config file that I'm using, which is just going to create the config map for Metal LB. Uh, you can see the file there. The key important part here is the addresses. Since I only have one public IP, the range is just that IP to that IP, which will tell it how to handle those requests. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and apply the... Uh, there we go, called it Metal LB. We're gonna apply that, and it's gonna create a good number of stuff here. What this is doing is essentially setting up Metal LB, the, the service, service account, pods, all kinds of fun stuff there. And what Metal LB is, for quick reference, because I know we're, we're flying through, is Metal LB is literally Metal Load Balancer. It is specifically designed to have the ability to provide you a load balancer where an environment doesn't normally have one, such as not running in AWS or GKE or other providers that have built-in load balancer providers. This matters because while I can show anybody how to run the charts with Nginx listing on an individual node port and just make sure that every node has it, you can actually replicate somebody's actual environment with the load balancer that you would come to expect without having to make extra modifications and configuration differences. Yep. Okay, so next, um, some RBAC stuff that we need to do. This is coming directly from GitLab's documentation on Helm installs, namely the preparation stage. Uh, it's basically going to set up, you know, all the tiller stuff that we're going to need. So once again, kubectl, apply dash, apply dash f. I just called it RBAC because I am not original on naming. There's our service count and our cluster role binding. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and install Helm. Once again, this command is coming from GitLab documentation, but um, we're gonna set up Helm in it, tell it to upgrade if it already exists, which it doesn't, and then tell it the service count name is Tiller. And we're gonna get some output there, um, some warnings because I haven't fully set everything up, but it's not really worrisome here. So next, we're gonna go ahead and add the repo for our GitLab Helm chart. I'm pretty sure I already have it there, but it doesn't hurt. I'm gonna do a repo update just because why not? And then we're gonna go ahead and install the uh, GitLab, you know, the GitLab Helm. Now what I'm using here is two files, base and values. The base file is just from the examples in our charts documentation. It's the GKE minimum install. And then values is just some values that are gonna be needed for my install, namely the domain, the IP, and then my, you know, what email address to use for the issuer. So we're gonna go ahead and run that, and that's gonna take a little bit to put some output there, but yeah. So last we left off, um, Helm was installing, and I have K9S running, but luckily everything is up and running since there was a bit of a time delay there. So I should be able to, in my browser, go to gitlab.collier.me, and we see the login. So what I'm going to need to do is kubectl 
get secret default because I didn't give it a namespace. We're going to need the initial login right there. Which is randomly generated every time, so we're not worried about having it on video. And I don't have this memorized, so I always have to look this up. You get to Jason's level and you've done this enough, you have this part memorized, but I'm not there yet. You get this very, very secure password right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do root password. And it logged in. And you know, we could create a project. I'm calling it blah because I am not original on naming. And there we've got a project. So you can see GitLab's kind of doing what it should be doing. You could also access this, we can Giddily servers. You see that it's going to the Giddily pod like it should be. So, you know, we've got a good idea that everything is working as it should. Um, I don't think I installed a runner on this one, so I can't really show like CI, CD stuff or anything like that. But in general, you can see that we've now got a running GitLab instance, and it did take considerably less time than it might normally take to deploy with Kubernetes. And it's taking much less resources and you know cost than it would to actually deploy with Kubernetes. That said, at no point would I recommend this for production, and I'm going to let Jason explain why on that one. Right. So the first one of this is one, the developers of, of K3S specifically say not production ready. Therefore, take their word for it. Two, and I want you to be very aware of this, there is a port that is exposed as UDP. It's called VXNet. K3S uses VXNet to do internode communication. And this is how the networking piece of Kubernetes actually interacts. So K3S uses a piece called Flannel. Flannel uses VXNet, which is UDP. Anything that talks to that port can be a part of the cluster network. So one does not expose that to the internet ever. If, you, if you've seen my buzz create presentation, that's why it sits behind a mobile router because I have gated it off and not have to worry about it by having a router in its place. The next thing is you can do multi-node with K3S. So if you need to stand up like a large number of these to play with to replicate a, a customer's example without going into GKE and going, give me 15 nodes, right? You can actually spawn up several copies of K3S on different VMs and get them to connect to each other. You can either do that manually through K3S command and its documentation, which is available as part of the Rancher documentation, or you can use Ketchup to actually do a join, which will connect to the second node and actually join it to the master and become a second part of that. Now, if you're doing that in the cloud, have a firewall in place because of said UDP networking port, okay? Uh, the other thing I would point out from, from Jason is we are using effectively the GKE minimal, which means the runner is turned off, I think we turn off Prometheus, and we turn down the HPAs, right? If you have a larger node, technically the node size that Jason used, you can actually run a full-blown copy of the chart. It's big enough. Um, if you have multiple nodes, you can go wild with the settings and have fun. We just turn them down so that you can fit them into the smallest thing possible. This is an example, as I said while off recording, that you can run in a VM on your laptop and will consume less resources than Minikube will. Um, and in theory, won't have the problems that HyperKit has when you start connecting to VPNs. I don't have a Mac, I can't tell you for a fact because I can't test it. Does anybody have any interesting questions, thoughts? Please.
that crickets three. So Jason. Yeah, I, I think we're good on that. That um, is deer in hand. Like. <laughs> yeah, my laptop's working now. So yeah, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Thanks all for coming. Hope it, uh, hope it proves helpful to you.